I decided it would be interesting to take a look at the current available jobs in Ruby because I know that people are very interested in learning Ruby and everybody knows that I am always interested in supporting the Ruby cause. So let's just jump into something I found on Indeed.com. So we see here a few Ruby jobs. This is in New York City. I just did a little search. So here we go. Senior Ruby on Rails developer remote. So remote worker, New York, New York. Uh, you have to pay them $22,000 a year. So you look here on the right-hand side. Indeed, yes, you must pay them $22,000 a year to work in Ruby. So we look down here. We got another one. Principal software engineer. Uh, you have to pay them $27,000 a year. So that's very interesting. This one there at the bottom, senior full stack software engineer, indeed flex staffing. Anyway, so flex flex uh, hours. Once again, New York, New York. You got you have to pay them thirty seven thousand. If you go to the top, here's the best opportunity. If you want to work in Ruby, in this particular senior developer job, you only have to pay them thirteen thousand dollars a year. So that's the one I would go for if you have your heart set on writing Ruby. Uh, in New York City, then this is the job you want to go for where you only have to pay them $13,000 a year. Now, on the other hand, if you go do some PHP or C Sharp or JavaScript or Java or Python work, they actually pay you as opposed to you having to pay them like in Ruby. That's just the weird reality of being a Ruby developer these days. So I have a strange thing going on with my Audi. So I have an Audi S5. And when you're driving a German sports car, it's, it's the funnest thing you can possibly drive out there in terms of feeling and handle and so forth. But they can be unusually inconsistent vis-a-vis -vis their electronics. So I have an, uh, an older Audi, and I kept it because the electronics are actually more sound, uh, less uh, buggy, less glitchy than the current crop of uh, Audi cars. In fact, I uh, had a few... Audi representatives, whose name shall not be named, uh, ha who have advised me not to buy a new one for those same reasons. Apparently my car, with its faults, is uh, a little bit more reliable than the current crop of Audi cars, if you can get them. The problem I'm running into these days is that um, I have uh, an error that appears every now and then. It's, you know, could appear once a month, could appear once in six months. And it's an error where the car moves, uh, where I get a, they call it the gearbox error. It's called a gearbox error. And um, it says you can keep driving, and everything's driving. But so the error would suggest that there's an issue with the transmission in the car, which is a huge potential issue. You don't want your tra transmission to go. That being said, when I do get this error, the car is running fine. It's like, everything's running fine, smooth, no problems. And then I get this error, boop, and nothing happens. Now, recently, in the last uh, month or two, I've had that problem happen, beep, and I'm at a red light, and then I go to press the gas, and it's not going anywhere. But everything seems fine. Um, I put it into park, and I try to put it back into drive again, and it still doesn't move. So what I do is I just restart, boop, and it runs, and it's like, boop, it's like resetting, it's like rebooting the application, and away it goes, zing, and no problem, and then no problem for a couple months, and then I had it happen one time, uh, one other time. Same thing, I just go restart, and it goes again. So I think to myself, you know, using the power of my nerd brain, I look at this, and it doesn't seem like it's a mechanical failure to me. It seems like it's a software failure, right? It's like I'm rebooting the machine, boom, and it works fine, and no problems. About seven, well, six years ago, maybe, I had a, 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 a strange thing with this car as well. We're out in the middle of nowhere, and the car just wouldn't start. Refused to start. I couldn't get it to start. I tried everything, boom, 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 re resetting the computer, turning it off and on. It just would not start. So we had to flat bed it back into town. We flat bed it back into town. We take it to the Audi dealership. They work on it for a couple hours. They couldn't figure it out. So then they just uh, detached the battery, reattached the battery, Bing, bang, boom, Bob's your uncle, car's running fine. Never had that problem again, years and years later. Again, they had to reboot the bloody car. It seems these days when you're driving 
German sports cars, at least Audi. It's kind of like driving Windows XP. You have to reboot the bloody thing every so often to keep it running smooth. Hey, there you go. So I love my uh, Audi. It drives amazingly well, super fun. But once in a while, like Windows, you have to reboot it to make sure you have uh, optimal functioning. A little tip 